Apple has now released the invites for the 2024 WWDC event, which will be happening on Monday, the 10th of June. So here are the eight things we can expect from it. And speaking of things to expect, meet Curveline Canvas by Arif, our first new wallpaper pack for April. And this is one of my favorite packs we've ever released. We've got some really beautiful designs here. These three are my favorites, but of course, all 10 look simply stunning, especially in 8K. Get Curveline Canvas in our app wallpapers for iOS and Android today. Okay, so at number one, we have the International Vision Pro launch. As we all know by now, the Vision Pro is only available in the US right now. In fact, this is why I haven't made a video on it yet. Yes, I could have imported it from the US, but I wanted to hold off until it officially launches in the UK, as that means that I can get my sizing right and I can experience the Vision Pro at its very best, uh, rather than having to compromise on the fit, the storage, and also having to pay even more for it. Apple has already stated that the Vision Pro will launch in more countries by the end of this year, and ming Ko reported that this will actually happen before WWDC. Of course, we are in April now, and we still haven't had any international launch, so my guess is that unless we see it in May via press release, the international launch for the Vision Pro will indeed be at WWDC. As for which other countries to expect, these are said to be Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK. France, Germany, Italy, and Spain have also been reported, although I think these may come later in the year. And Tim Cook also stated that the Vision Pro will be launching in China too later this year, with Tencent already working on Vision OS versions of some of their most popular apps. The second thing to expect is Vision OS 2.0. Now, we don't know much about it just yet, but what we do know is that Apple has been testing a version of Vision OS that supports the Apple Pencil. And this is awesome. Like, imagine being able to use the Apple Pencil to draw on any surface. That would be such a game changer. Although, I'm not entirely sure how well the tracking would work, as the Vision Pro won't be able to see the pencil tip itself. So, if anything, it would connect to the pencil via Bluetooth, which would then send the accelerometer data to the Vision Pro in order to provide a more accurate tracking. At least, this would be my guess. The third announcement is going to be iOS 18, which I think will be the main focus of this entire event. Now, we've already done a number of videos on iOS 18 before, which you can check out if you want to learn more about it and when it comes to all the changes in detail. But to keep it simple for this video, there are two major changes, with the first being AI. Apple is said to be adding a number of AI features into iOS 18, some of which will be cloud-based, while others will be on device. The cloud-based ones are said to be the new version of Siri, uh, which is said to be powered by Google's own Gemini AI. And this will be the biggest update that Siri has ever received. Whereas the on-device AI would be things like generative text, summaries and notes, auto-generated playlists in Apple Music, that sort of stuff. And this would be fully powered by Apple's own AI systems. While the second big change is said to be the new home screen. Now, the latest rumors are pointing towards Apple, allowing us to place icons anywhere we want on the home screen, just like on Android. And this would be a huge change, as it would essentially reimagine the way the home screen works, which has really remained the same ever since the introduction of the very first iPhone. I, for one, am really looking forward to this, as there were so many times when I wanted to have a specific app layout on my home screen, but I was unable to do so because of Apple's restrictions. Now, I don't think that this will work exactly like on Android. If anything, I do see Apple allowing you to place blank widgets, which would then act as spacers. That would be my guess, but let's wait and see. Of course, there are a ton of other iOS 18 changes for which I do suggest you watch our in-depth iOS 18 videos on. Then we've also got iPadOS 18, and here we've literally had zero leaks at all. But I would assume that a lot of the changes from iOS 18, such as the new AI features and the new home screen, these would be making their way onto the iPads as well. At number five, we have macOS 15, which just like iOS 18, it will get a number of AI features. But unlike iOS 18, those features will apply to some of Apple's biggest professional apps too, like Xcode. Xcode AI is said to be similar to GitHub Copilot from Microsoft, where developers can quickly generate code based on natural language requests. It is also said to be able to predict and finish blocks of code, which would of course seriously speed up the development process for apps. On top of this, we know that Apple's been working on a number of other AI tools, including an image editor that allows you to also use natural language to edit your images, as well as an AI tool called Keyframer that allows you to add motion to 
2D images by simply describing how you want them to be animated. And if you remember what Apple stated about the new M3 MacBook Air, that this is the best consumer laptop for AI, despite Apple not really having many AI features right now, this does make me think that macOS 15 will be when all of that power will finally get to be utilized. And then we have watchOS 11, which just like iPadOS 18, we haven't had any leaks on it at all. However, considering that watchOS 10 was one of the biggest updates in watchOS history with the addition of widgets, remapped buttons, and a redesigned app drawer, I don't expect watchOS 11 to be anything special. We might get some AI features exclusively for the Series 9 and the Ultra 2, as they both got the S9 chip inside, which does have a 4-core neural engine. Although, I do expect these features to be quite limited compared to iOS and macOS. Which brings us to some potential hardware upgrades. Now, we've had some hardware releases in past WWCs, so we may see some this year too, although I wouldn't necessarily bet on these. If we do see some hardware announcements, the most likely candidate is the M3 Mac Mini. The Mac Mini is in this weird spot right now, as it runs the M2 chip, despite most of other Apple's Macs being updated with the M3. Now, Mark Gurman did say back in July of 2023 that the M3 Mac Mini was not expected to launch until late 2024. Of course, that was a report from almost a year ago, although we haven't really had any updates since. Personally, I do think that WWC would be a good time to finally launch the M3 and the M3 Pro Mac Minis, as the M2 models came out in January of 2023. A new Mac Studio is also something that we could potentially see, although this one was updated at the previous WWC in 2023, so it's not quite as out of date as the Mac Mini is. Of course, the main updates here would be the M3 Max and the new M3 Ultra chips, with the M3 Ultra being the last chip of the M3 family that Apple has yet to reveal. So, a WWC unveil would make a lot of sense considering that last year was also when we got the M2 Ultra. Now, what's interesting here is that the M3 Max apparently lacks the Ultra Fusion chip interconnect. Vadim from MaxTech was theorizing that this could mean that the M3 Ultra is actually an entirely new chip with no efficiency cores and far better performance than what two M3 Max chips combined uh, would have been able to achieve. Which in turn means that Apple could add the Ultra Fusion interconnect to the M3 Ultra and then give us the M3 Extreme for the new Mac Pro, which, as we all know, was a very underwhelming release last year, as it was just a significantly larger Mac Studio with very few benefits other than some extra PCIe slots that could only be used for storage expansion. And lastly, we could also see a brand new Pro Display XDR. As we all know, the original version came out back in 2019, so it is already five years old. And we have heard a bunch of rumors over the years that Apple was working on some updated displays with Apple Silicon. And this was after the introduction of the Studio Display in 2022, by the way. According to Twitter leaker Crop Cry, the Pro Display XDR2 will have a 6K mini LED display with steerer speakers this time, as well as center stage, so front-facing camera as well, an Apple A13 chip matching the studio display, as well as a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio compared to 1 million to 1, which is what we have now, and the same ports as the current model, with the price also expecting to remain the same according to him. So based on this, we could see this next-gen Pro Display XDR announced at WWDC. And that's everything to expect from this year's WWDC. Of course, software announcements are almost certain to happen, whereas hardware announcements are possible, but not certain. So let me know which one of the announcements are you excited for the most. For me, it is definitely the UK launch for the Vision Pro and then iOS 18 and all of its AI features. But yeah, let me know down below. I'm Daniel, Screen Zone of Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zone of Tech, signing out. Cheers.